Can everybody hear me? Just checking. I'm not tall. I'm not tall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Brent Shield. I'm, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I've known Dwayne for 31 years. I was devastated to hear his passing. My heart goes to his family. As a father, it is unthinkable to imagine losing my son. And my heart aches for Mr. and Mrs. Eds. I want to testify to the quality that was most prominent throughout my relationship with him. His spontaneity. Before I begin, I, I have to ask for forgiveness in advance. These stories may not seem connected, but to me they're all anecdotes of the spontaneous spirit Dwayne weaved into his life. Wade enriched my life through his spontaneity. Forgive me that these stories seem nonsensical. Spontaneity often is nonsensical. We met in 1980. He enrolled in my grade school, Convent of the Visitation. Visitation was, yes, an all-girls school. <laughs> the girl was a fantastic lower school education that just so happens to be co-ed. There's like three people who know about that. Anyway, although few in the area know of this, here we were, boys in an all-girls school. <laughs> As a 10-year-old boy, it's tough to understand that there are only five boys in your class of 25 kids. We almost had to become friends, for we were outnumbered at a time when girl germs were something to fear. <laughs> Dwayne was also moving to Sunfish Lake, where I recently moved to as well. I had the jackpot. I had a new neighbor, boy classmate, and a friend. Dwayne and I became very fast friends and playmates throughout our childhood. We'd go on great hikes, make forks, ride bikes, to see music playing the computer swim, cross country ski the works. He, we loved being together. We listened and understood each other. When we were 14, we rode from our homes in Sunfish Lake to Wisconsin on bicycle, 40 miles. We were two peas in a pod, and we were brothers. We are brothers. I feel like an adopted member of the Hitz family. My home life was less than ideal, and the Hitz family welcomed me to stay with them on many, 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 many occasions. Were it not for the generosity of the Hitz family, I don't know where I'd be today. Dwayne's family moved away to New York in 1985. I visited him at Christmas time, and we took our level of play and brought it to the big city. We took the train to New York City on New Year's Eve, just the two of us, impulsively, Dwayne spent all of his money gambling on a card game powered by a scammer in the street. <laughs> I stood by like his disapproving father, I'm not bailing you out. But he carried on. I was hoping, which reminds me of the Green Machine story. It's totally, it doesn't matter, I'm going for it. So, <laughs> I was hoping my barrier, my inhibition, would change his impulses, I was wrong. Dwayne bet his last $10 on a Queen of Diamonds that was removed from the makeshift cardboard box table. Dwayne was scammed and was broke. <laughs> Dwayne was now penniless, but I had $50. <laughs> we had to take the train back to the Hits residence on Long Island, and I was unwilling to yield my pocket, if only for a phone call to his parents, thinking he might learn his lesson. Dwayne didn't want to face that music, and he got an incentive and came up with a very clever solution. The subways are free on major holidays. So Dwayne figured we could go to different tourist locations via the subway and panhandle folks from out of town. I was mortified. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll see. I thought calling his parents was easier. But he thought otherwise. So Dwayne straightened his hair, sorted out his appearance, he made sure his watch and his gold chain were visible so he didn't look too shabby. And he walked away from me, right here. Keep an eye on me. I had no idea what would happen next. I was a sheltered kid from Minnesota. This was my first trip away from Lutherans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I am very comfortable. She, she assured me it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, so Dwayne courageously reached out to pedestrians walking by. And no, I'm sure having no starvation of using words. I mean, even at, at age 15, he had a tremendous economy of words. I couldn't hear exactly what he said, but I'm sure it was good. Dwayne incredibly had $60 in 30 minutes. Dwayne now had more money than I did. 
<laughs> we managed to watch the ball drop in Times Square and rode the train home to Glen Head, Long Island. We're the only two sober people on that train. <laughs> Doing that with Dwayne was as thrilling as could be. His clever spontaneity got him out of the train. Dwayne once surprised me in college by driving down to visit me. It was an impulsive gift. I was in St. Louis at the time. It was an impulsive gift that made me cry with how thoughtful and loving it was. Dwayne was an incredibly intelligent man. You're kind of getting that sense from everyone's test of uh, their eulogy. But he was relentlessly curious about everything. When obstacles would arrive, Dwayne relished solutions to work around them. Dwayne was not shy in taking risks and experiencing adventure. And Dwayne was so smart, he was able to spot trends way before anyone I knew. He knew about the power of personal computers, the internet, and digital marketing before he had electricity. <laughs> Good, you got this up <laughs> We once drove a two-seat MG convertible across the country. We had a tent and a single change of clothes. Dwayne, Dwayne wanted to go swimming in the Pacific. I, I think he thought that the Washington coast was similar to Malibu. We arrived in a classic Seattle rain. We checked into a hotel, drank a six-pack of beer, watched TV, and went to bed. We had east the next day and stopped at Yellowstone National Park's Old Faithful Geyser. When we wanted to depart, the car wouldn't start. We were stranded. Dwayne improvised in the spontaneity of that moment. He sat in the Old Faithful Lodge and chatted up a cute female employee. I played fix-it guy out in the parking lot and after several hours, the car started. I ran back to the lodge to alert Dwayne the good news, but he was enthralled in every syllable of his new friend. I patiently waited for the conversation to break. We gotta go. I said, No, we don't. We're on vacation. <laughs> yes, we do. I finally got the motor started. No, we don't. It'll start again. Dwayne didn't want to bicker in front of his new friend, so we went outside to Old Faithful and discussed the situation diplomatically at 4 o'clock in the morning. He stood there and tried to shock the rarity of the situation into me. We have the most perfectly split clear sky above us, and to this day I've never seen so many stars. We have money, and we have a single change of clothes. We're in no hurry to go anywhere. I was panicked that my car was stalled in the lot, and no mechanic would know how to spell MG, let alone how to fix it. He reluctantly agreed. That the rest of the trip home, he was filled with, had we stayed, for worse. The shy, the sky, the wildlife, the people, it was a lost opportunity he reminded me of over the past 20 years. He always encouraged me to loosen up and smell the roses along the way. He routinely chided me for being stuffy, which I find ironic. I was the stuffy guy in the relationship. I was a by-the-book kind of guy, where Dwayne was a write the book you should go along with fellow. I bet you didn't know that Dwayne was a comedy writer. I used to perform when I was younger, as Mike talked about, and Dwayne would help me write my jokes. He's been with me in countless stand-up sessions with his portable tape recorder and his notebook. In the parking lot outside, Dwayne would play the tape in his car after the show and give me feedback of what worked and what didn't. We'd write all kinds of new stuff together and giggle over coffee and cigarettes at a 24-hour restaurant. Most of my friends have never seen me perform, for I didn't want a charity laugh. I got a genuine, real response with Dwayne. And Dwayne would not laugh at stuff that wasn't funny. He was honest, straightforward, and constructive. He never shied from giving advice, and his ability to brainstorm was epic. Another thing Dwayne never tried, or never shied away from, was a chance to be in unique situations. One summer day, Dwayne realized we had three days of no obligations. We spontaneously departed Minneapolis and drove to the rustic Canadian border, a nine-hour drive. We rented a canoe and brought fishing gear to the Boundary Waters canoe area for, and bought fishing gear for a camping trip. We thought the outdoors fishing and campfire would be great. When we arrived at the Canadian border, we paddled through a floating Canadian customs checkpoint. The guards thought we looked a bit underprepared for our three-day camp out. <laughs> you know, better get popping. Uh, most of the campgrounds are taken. Taken? Taken? This is the rustic outdoors. We, we paddled and paddled and paddled and paddled and paddled and, and then did more paddling. We ultimately found a campground on an island in the lake. Frankly, it was our last hope. Just as complete darkness set in, then came the rain. <laughs> and then came the hunger. And thankfully, we brought two whole cans of pasta 
but forgot the camera for <laughs> We went to sleep in the tent and hoped for a sunny morning. I awoke to Dwayne not being in the tent. He was desperately trying to light the fire with the rain-soaked wood on this desolate island. I quickly got equally frustrated. We paddled our canoe back through customs and abandoned our adventure. When we arrived at the outriggers, we parked the canoe on the shore, and it floated away while we debriefed. We turned around and saw the canoe 500 feet away. I'm being conservative. It was a very long way away. The wind had taken it, and without thinking like that, Dwayne sprinted into the ice-cold water, because really, it never really thaws up there. It's always a little icy. You could hear gasps of pain. <laughs> water. He hoisted himself up into the canoe like a champ. It, it, it was as though the canoe never tipped. And get try next time you get an opportunity. Just pull yourself into a canoe without a friend. They'll be out in the water for quite a while. A guy walked up to me during this and said, uh, I have a motorboat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's that crazy to swim in that water. <laughs> so we revised our adventure. We, we ate breakfast in Grand Marais and later drove to Thunder Bay, Ontario, where the drinking age was 19. And so were we. We had fun. We pretended we were with the band a completely fictitious group, and we met all kinds of strange people wanting to know about our phony musical success. We secretly cackled with laughter with each strange story we made up. Our hotel room was above the very shabby bar, Terry's Lounge, and Dwayne would sum up that trip every time we talked about it with two words, Terry's Lounge. And those two words still make me giggle, especially the way Dwayne would say them. We enrolled in UCLA together when we were both 33. We were the first group of folks to do an experiment with the National University of Singapore and UCA, UCLA to earn two MBAs over the course of six two week six two week sessions spread over 18 months. That's a mouthful. This pioneering experience was brutal, grueling, and rewarding. Each session was packed full of lecture, tests, and coursework, and the periods between the sessions were loaded with reading and research. We studied together, we were roommates. We leaned on each other heavily. We studied in Los Angeles, Singapore, and Shanghai. I wouldn't have done it if it were not for Dwayne. Were it not for his spontaneity, I would have passed that opportunity by. Our most recent opportunity for spontaneous adventure was Rag Ride, defined as the Register's annual Great Bicycle Ride across Iowa, held this Friday, July 24th, through the 31st. This bike ride is about 50 miles a day, 454 miles total. I thought it was just like going to Wisconsin, only flatter and longer. I called him to tell about the opportunity and jumped at it. If Dwayne bought a super premium bike, was in extensive training, and made an iPhone application for the journey. There's one thing Dwayne was a bit pensive on, the, the bike shorts. He didn't want to attract the wrong kind of attention. <laughs> they look fruity. He said. <laughs> but I suppose 9,500 of the 10,000 people will be wearing them, so I can look collectively fruity. <laughs> Apart from the shorts, Dwayne was excited. That excitement will not be realized by Dwayne, and I will ride across Iowa next week in his honor. A friend of mine wrote to me, When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart, and you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. Don't let the weight of your heart slow you down across Iowa. I'm sure Dwayne will be right by your side pushing you along. Dwayne was loyal to me. He was always with me. He was side by side with his kids in play, in the MG, on stage, on the water, in class. And at this very moment, I will never forget Dwayne. Therefore, he's immortal. Dwayne will be with me on my ride, and he'll be with all of us for the rest of our lives.